Hey everybody, welcome back. Troy here. Gonna be cooking out back on the Wichita once again. Where you at there, Wichita? Wichita's coming up to Tim, guys. So, uh, anyway, my buddy Keith Bettag, he said he's gonna do a meatloaf this Sunday, and he asked me to join in on the fun. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make my mom's uh, meatloaf. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit. Uh, my mom's been making this since the mid-60s. She found the recipe in the River Road cookbook, uh, which is down in central Louisiana. So uh, it's an old recipe. And I hope y'all like it just as much as I did growing up. Let me show you what goes in. All right, gang, here's what we got. I got some veal ground up. Uh, it's about a pound of it. A little over a pound of ground beef, 80-20, or ground chuck, actually. Throw a little bit of pork in there as well. So I got three different meats going in. I did take a, a jalapeno and just diced it up real good. It's a couple of cloves of garlic. This is one whole shallot. I'll probably use half of this. Got some panko breadcrumbs. Got some uh, Lipton's. Uh, this is the beefy onion soup mix. Got two eggs. Uh, my mom says she always used the golden mushroom condensed soup by Campbell's. So I got the golden mushroom. Gonna need a little bit of milk. Gonna need some onions, bell pepper, and celery. This is the Trinity, the Cajun Trinity. Got that already pre made. Uh, Calls for Worcestershire. I'm going to use a little bit of Worcestershire later on, but right now, for the meat and stuff, I'm going to use some of this uh, steak, steak sauce right here. I'm going to use some of this savory steak seasoning. I think I mentioned two eggs. There you go, Keith. A little bit of hot smoked paprika. Still loving this stuff, man. It's good stuff. And also, from Keith Bedtag, I got me some of this rich and tangy ketchup by Brooks. Keith said this is the bomb right here, so we're going to check it out. A little salt and pepper to taste. I think that's about all we need to go in there. Let's throw it together. Alright, first off, my veal. I'm going to go in with some veal here. Get that diaper right out of there. Get that out of here. Ain't that right, Moonshine? Alright, and again, my 80-20 chuck. Going in. A little bit of pork. I don't need all this pork right here. My mom says she uses uh, maybe a quarter pound, a half pound. I'm going to use maybe a third. We're going to see how that works. Uh, maybe close to half. Anywho, just get you some pork in there. And this is just ground pork. It's not uh, hot, spicy or anything like that. Just regular. Now, we need some eggs. Put some eggs in there. There's a one. There's a two eggs going in. Get the junk out of here. Right on. Now again, we're going to use some shallot. People don't use shallot enough, man. This is good stuff right here. Kind of cross between onion and garlic. Great stuff. Two cloves of garlic. Jalapeno. This is, and again, I'm varying off the recipe that she does a little bit, but uh, it does not call for jalapeno. I just wanted to spruce it up just a little bit, and it doesn't call for shallot either. It just calls for the Cajun Trinity. Onions, bell pepper, celery. So we're gonna throw some of this in there. Just like so. Alright. Got some of the savory steak sauce, uh, savory steak seasoning by Red Monkey. Y'all see me use that. Again, this is excellent stuff. We're gonna put some of that in there. Now that's probably a tablespoon or so. Hot smoked paprika. Where you at there, Keith? Throw some of that in there. Give me a spoon, man. I'll just use this knife right here. Probably a teaspoon in there. Okay, there you go, Keith. A little bit more. That is some really good stuff. Pepper. Just fresh cracked black. And salt and pepper to taste, there's no rhyme or reason why you put more pepper or more salt in there. Just, uh, again, just however you feel like doing it. This is fresh salt right here, cracked. A little bit of uh, Liam Piran steak sauce. Go on in. This is great on hamburgers, too, if you don't... Uh, if you haven't tried it. That helps keep it moist. It's good stuff right here. What else I need? Some uh, milk. 
half a cup of milk. Go on in. A little bit more. There you go. Get it right, T. Roy. Breadcrumbs. Tell me the breadcrumbs we need here. Breadcrumbs we need. One cup. I've got the panko breadcrumbs. So that's what we're going to use. Half a cup, huh? All right. No, it's one cup. So uh, this is a half cup measurement, so I need a couple of these. One. Um, about that much. There we go. Now get your hands in there and mix it all up. I'm going to do that. We'll be right back. All right, guys. I've been doing this about a minute and a half. And as you can see, it's starting to get tacky and sticky. And that's when you know that it's done. It's, it's mixed enough. Everything's pretty much blended in. Uh, starting to stick to your fingers there. Now what I'm going to do, stick this in the fridge and just kind of let it set up, cover it. I'm going to put some, uh, some plastic wrap on there and just let it sit about half hour in the fridge. And again, Wichita is coming up to temp. And if y'all don't have a grill to do this on, by all means, use your oven. That's what people used to do that a long time ago, you know. Uh, Preheat the oven at 325. Put this in a loaf pan, cook it at 325 for 45 minutes, take it out, put you some topping on there if you want. You know, some barbecue sauce or some of this that I'm fixing to show you here in a little bit when we get to that point. Uh, but once you put a topping on it, put it back in that 325 oven. That's 325 Fahrenheit, guys. But put it back in there for another half hour. And then take it out, let it cool. And it should be good to go, usually anyway. I'm going to just test it, but it should be good to go. So 45 minutes original cook. Put the topping on, let it go another half hour. That's the way my mama did it. And it turned out pretty damn good. All right, gang, I totally forgot... I need to add this soup mix right here. It's just, uh, again, the beefy onion. Should have added this at the beginning. But I'm glad I remembered. And again, just mix this up. Let it sit for about uh, 30 minutes in the fridge. Let it hang out and let the flavors mingle up. And we'll meet you back out at the Wichita. All right, guys, it's been about a half hour. I'll show you what I got. Got my meat loaves here. See, there we go. That's just uh, just meat loaf. What I'm going to do to, to protect the top and kind of add a little flavor, put a little bit of bacon right on the top of it here like this. Just like so. Alright. I'll let that cook a little bit. Back there. I've already done this one. This is the second loaf. I made two of these loaves. I've uh, got a little bacon left over here after cutting trimming that so I'm just gonna throw that on top here as well anyway we're gonna bake this about uh, about 300 degrees and uh, we'll check on it here in about an hour see if it's done we're getting close to being done and then we'll put the topping on it so we'll be back all right guys we've been going for one hour Let me pull these over here we all can see them that's what we got so far and what I'm gonna do is pull this bacon off I'm going to sit this bacon over here and let it finish cooking. That way the top can get some uh, color on it. And what I'm going to do is, while this is going, getting the top all colored up, I thought I would uh, mix up the topping we're going to put on here. So let me show you that. Be right back. Alright gang, sorry about the lighting. Uh, we're going to mix the topping up real quick here. Campbell's condensed soup, golden mushroom, one can going in. Alright guys, and what I'm going to do, i got some baby uh, portobellas. Kind of diced them up. Throw that in there. We'll need, uh, I don't know, a few, few tablespoons maybe of uh, Worcestershire. Alright gang, now we need to throw in a little bit of horseradish. I got this extra hot horseradish. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, I forget what the actual recipe says, so I'm just kind of guessing here. I think it said like three, three teaspoons. So we're going to do that. Alright, right, now we need two thirds a cup of ketchup. We're going to use uh, this Brooks Rich and Tangy Ketchup that uh, Keith Bedtag was so kind to bring to me. This is a one-third cup measuring, so we're going to do two of these. Put them in, just like that. 
All right, now what you want to do is mix all this together, stir it all up. This is going to be our basting sauce. All right, it's time to baste. I got my uh, sauce here. Just going to pile it on top. Let this go for another half hour or so. And we'll be in business. Oh, that's going to be some good stuff right there. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll be back after uh, it cooks for a little bit longer. All right, gang, two hours of cooking. That's what we got. And I forgot to mention I did rotate these like every 20, 30 minutes as they needed uh, just to, for some even cooking. In fact, I layered this one back behind this one. I just pulled it up here close so y'all can see it. Um, but anyway, fix to take them in and let them cool a little bit. I'm going to take them out of these pans. Alright guys, there you go. That's my meatloaf right there. They look pretty doggone good. Took them out of the pans. See the sides of them. This really does smell good. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of put these over here on this grill just like this. Let the outside just get a little bit dried out and then we're going to take them back off and we're going to eat them. This is it guys, we are pulling this off. It's been uh, about 10 minutes on each of these sides. I flipped them around after 10 minutes. Let's check them out. Come on now, get on over here big old boy. That's what we got guys. I think it looked pretty doggone good. All right, we're gonna let it cool off inside. And we'll be right back. All right, gang, check that out. That looks pretty doggone good, doesn't it? Sure does. Really, really good. Let's cut into it. Let's see what it tastes like. Can y'all see that? Oh, yeah, you can see it good. All right, we're ready. Aha. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, this smells so awesome right now. Look at this nice, big, thick slice here couple of them. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you what. Y'all see that? Mm, mm hmm Garlic and stuff in there. Woo! Man, if y'all can smell this. No kidding, man. This is good smelling stuff. Can't wait to give it a taste. Alright, so that's what we got here. Let's give this a taste. Fix me a plate. Be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna check this out. Now see Keith, old Keith Betag? Yeah, I kinda fecked you out with that seafood type meatloaf, didn't I? It was really good though. But y'all check this out. This is a really good meatloaf. That's what we've got. And again, light's crazy out here. Hopefully y'all can see it. Get out of there. Anyway, let's give it a shot. Check it out. What do you think? There's your piece right there. I'll tell you what, the outer bark looking stuff on there is. Mmm, that's good stuff. Mm hmm. Hell yeah, thumbs up, man. Mmm, I love it. And that topping um, that we put on top of there, you can taste the horseradish in it, but. I guess being in the heat, in that pit, it uh, kind of tamed, toned down the horseradish a little bit, so it's not really super spicy like horseradish usually is. I'm telling you guys, this is good. Nice smoke ring, nice flavor, got all the trinity in there, the onions, bell peppers, celery. Oh, what else can you say, man? This is great, great meal. Thanks for the suggestion, Keith. And uh, if y'all haven't checked out Keith Bedtag's website, uh, and his channel. You ever check it out? It's good stuff. Hope you have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. Thanks, guys.